Figure it out. Hello, this is Adam Carlick with Flying and Eating. Today, let's go somewhere and do something. And make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Hey guys, it's Adam here. In the last couple episodes of Flying and Eating, we made our way out to Tokyo, Japan. We had a very long layover, and we ultimately got down to Saipan, the biggest and most populous island of the CNMI, a U.S. territory. Let the adventure begin. Half a day, everybody. Uh, that means like, hello, it's a greeting uh, out in the Marianas with Guam and CNMI. Uh, so I, we're just starting over with days, because this is going to be a whole new video, I'm sure. But uh, yeah, so at this point, um, I was staying at this hotel, very nice. And if you guys saw my Saipan video that I did a year ago, um, I'm actually hilariously close to the, there was like this little cafe that had this like French toast type of thing that wasn't French toast, but I don't know how else to describe it. Right by it, along with uh, the Galleria Mall and stuff, it's all like immediately within walking distance. Although I don't, we're not doing any of that right now, so I don't think we are. What I'm doing now at the moment is I'm just waiting for uh, Glenn and Mike. They were the guys who picked me up last night. You saw Glenn briefly in the footage there. Uh, today we're going to do all sorts of adventures. They're going to show me things. It is hot, boys. <laughs> it's 28 degrees Celsius. I have no idea what that is in Fahrenheit. I know. I'm the odd American who knows Celsius and not Fahrenheit, but it's 28 C. Um, this is the perfect time of year to come out to these islands in the winter because in the summer this, these places are like on fire. <laughs> it's like uh, 40 something Celsius. I have no idea. Again, 100 and whatever in Fahrenheit. But uh, right now, 28, that's very, very pleasant. It's a little warmer than I prefer, but you know, I'm from Chicago. What do you expect? Glenn, where are we at? Are we? This is Glenn on the left, Mike on the right. Hi guys. I didn't give you formal introductions the other day. So, so what's our plan? What are we doing? Coffee. At uh, Java, Joe's. Java Joe's. What do you think of Java Joe's? It's one of the more popular places here in Saipan. So, so you recommend it? Yes. Yeah. Definitely. Good, good coffee. Brian, so it's like food. Starbucks, but better. A little bit better. Good. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, you're not kidding. This place is like. Look at this place. This is huge. This is like. It, it looks like it used to be like a, a full restaurant, and now it's just focused on coffee. It's big. It's nice. So I got a Black Forest Mocha, which is an espresso, steamed milk, dark chocolate, cherry flavors, and whipped cream. Not usually the thing I do, but this sounded really good. Mike, do you think I'm gonna like this, this Black Forest Mocha? Oh, yeah. You ever had the Black Forest Mocha? Never. Never? never? Uh... It, it called to me, man. Yeah. I mean, it, I usually I go for black coffee, but that was... I mean, look at this. Looks like it's bleeding happiness. Yeah. If anything, you might have that extra shot of espresso in there. Yeah, the espresso is key. <laughs> you gotta do that. Otherwise, you're just drinking a shake. Okay, so we've sat down. I'm enjoying my chocolate cherry coffee. I, you guys like your coffees? You good? All right. So I brought these guys some stuff from Japan for my little layover there. We got a couple of these little like cake things. I have no idea if they're any good. And then they both get various candies, these random Hershey things I found that I've never seen before. Some Kit Kats. You each get one. What do you guys want to do? I'm going to go uh, see what's up with this chocolate. Chocolate mousse, chocolate. Is that what it is? Is this chocolate yeah. mousse? Uh -huh. Okay, okay, okay. And then chocolate pudding. On a pastry scale, maybe something from a vending machine. Right yeah, now? vending machine scale. Let's be um, real here. <laughs> I'm gonna get that out. Nine point five. That's pretty. Nine point five on a vending machine scale. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's like the little cake thing. Oh. Mm. Smells like um, rice. <laughs> Almost like our local delicacy, uh, potu. It's like a sponge cake or a pound cake. Maybe. One of those things. And it's really mild, not too sweet, mm. and really soft. And, uh, what's that action word there? Sponge Moist. cake is right. <laughs> sponge cake? Sponge cake consistency and taste. Good coffee. Good, good coffee. with coffee. Yeah. Okay. Good hot coffee. What do you think? A lot more milder than the last one. Yeah. So if you had to pick between the two, like you were like, I just have one. I'm going to have the chocolate one. Chaga one? What about you? I'm gonna go with this. Ooh! Yep. We have a split decision here. I like it. Local cuisine, KFC and Taco Bell. Yep. Wow! So we're, we're cruising around. We stopped for a second and I noticed a radio station. What was the name of that radio station? KKMP? KK, uh, KCNMI or something? Oh yeah, that designated, yeah. KCMNI. Okay, so um, the thing is, I noticed that and I thought, that's interesting that you guys observe the K thing. In the US, there's a law that says if you are east of the Mississippi River, your radio station has to start with a W. If you're west of it, it has to start with a K. I didn't think that CNMI would observe that law because of how much further away it is, but apparently you guys are doing it. What were some of the other radio stations you were mentioning? 
KKMP, KS, KSCM, KSCM. But they all start with K. Basically. Yes, they all start yeah. with K. There you go. It's America. Mike, where are we at? What are we doing? Surf club, uh, southern part of the island. Uh, here they um, they're known for having uh, the Angus steaks, and they always uh, do their part to uh, mention that. Did like you guys, you say there's tomorrow stuff here? Yeah, yeah. So they do like the local favorites, like uh, beef short ribs. They have chicken calligan. They got lumpia. That's Filipino, but it's a local favorite still. Yeah. Now, can you? I mean, forgive me. Can you explain what tomorrow is to the fine people watching? So that's the people of the Mariana. So whether you're from Guam, whether you're from Saipan, Tinian Rota, or the other northern islands, uh, the people that reside there are tomorrow. And it's also the language that we speak here. So there you go. And that's where we're going to go try and get some local tomorrow food. What is this? What do we got going on here? This is fried lumpia. Tell me about it. Well, it's basically a fried lumpia. You got. Um, what is lumpia? Lumpia, it's a dish out of Asia. You know, it's wrapped uh, rice paper mm -hmm. and yeah. vegetables inside of beef. Is there any meat? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe ground pork. Okay. Yeah. Or yeah, I, I have yeah. no idea, but it looks good. It is good. I, yeah. It almost looks like, for lack of a better way of explaining it, it almost looks like an egg roll, but like fried. Okay, so you're saying there's a process here. That's what I understand, yeah. All right, let's do it. Yeah. What do you got? So you, you get your, your lettuce here okay. as your, your wrap. Put the, like um, a taco shell. Almost. There you go, yep. oh, yeah. This your... would this would be like um, Mariana's tacos. Yep, yep. <laughs> a a Asian taco. <laughs> you grab that, the Olympia, put it in, and... Garnish it with, uh, what do you call this? Bean sprouts. Bean yeah. sprouts, you know, for more uh, tasty flavor. And then you got uh, basil. Thai basil. Ooh, basil. Thai basil's basil. good. Yes. You know, some leaves. Okay. And then, and then optional. There's noodles back here, by the way. Oh, yeah. I forgot about the noodles. Yes. Uh, these are rice noodles. Rice noodles are good, some man. Pepper noodles. Add that to the... So then you just eat that like a taco. Yes. And then to top it off, there's a sauce. What's the sauce? Lumpia sauce. <laughs> ah, awesome. Yeah, yeah. Duh. Loco moco. The Hawaiian dish. Yeah. Yeah. And this for the Hawaiian size uh, people. <laughs> well, dude, loco moco is bomb. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, yeah. I, I highly recommend it to people. It's, yeah. it's not something you see. You see it in the islands, yeah. obviously. Yeah. Um, can you describe it for everybody? Uh, yeah, so this one's a little bit upside down because the gravy's on the bottom. Mm -hmm. uh, the ones I'm used to, you got rice on the bottom and then uh, layered on top is the uh, beef, the egg, and the, and then the gravy on top of all that. And that's so basically a smothered. burger patty. Yeah, 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 yeah. burger patty with a sunny side up egg and you just destroy it. I like how the egg is just bleeding with <laughs> all the flavor. Got the um, chopstick. The so chopstick. Chopstick. Oh, chopstick. Steak. Okay. Steak, yes. All right, so what's in this? So it's basically what it's the word says. It's just steak chopped up into slices, stir fried with um, veggies. You got um, cabbage, broccoli, carrots, bell pepper. So I know his is Hawaiian. Is yours local? That's a very good question. I believe it is. I yeah. know it. Should it we just say yes? Yes. All right. <laughs> and I think this is the local one too. The short ribs. Yes, that's. Barbecue, so you got red rice. That's definitely yes. local. Yeah, that stuff's good. I love this sauce. Finadeni sauce. Yeah. That, I don't, I forget, what's it pronounced as? Finadeni. Finadeni. Yep. Okay. Finadeni sauce. Soy right. sauce, hot pepper, onions. I love that stuff, and I just pour it into my rice usually. Pour it in your yeah, rice. I like that stuff. Dip your meat in it. Yeah, I was introduced to that in Guam, and I just thought, like, whoa, this is, you guys are doing something. Yeah. The meat was really good, vegetables are vegetables, but that was a solid meal. Uh, if you're out here, this is a solid place to check out. And what a view. Look at that. You sit there right right inside or outside if you want. And look at this. This calm water. And I, I can't stress this enough. One of the greatest things about the U.S. territories out here, CNMI, Guam, is like everybody kind of thinks about, oh, I'm going to go to a beach. I'm going to go to Hawaii or whatever. And nobody ever talks about the fact that Hawaii's got tons and tons of people on it. You know what doesn't have a whole lot of people? A CNMI. Guam, you have these beaches all to yourself. Right now you can see like four people. Chaos. How would I ever find a space to myself out here with four whole people all the way down there? CNMI, man, like this is perfect beach weather, water, unbelievable. Highly recommended. I, again, I say this all the time, but it, the US territories are interesting. I've been to most of them. The only one I haven't been to is American Samoa. 
But it's just a reminder to all my fellow Americans, your country is big, it's bigger than you think. And it has access to every type of topography, every type of geography, every type of culture. This is all part of your country. You can come here at any time, no passport required, though to be fair, it does make it a little easier. So a little interesting update to the previous video. If you guys saw my Saipan video I did a year ago, uh, I was talking about these cargo ships, and I had mentioned how uh, Guam is actually not allowed to import stuff, but the CNMI is, so these are cargo ships that bring stuff in. Turns out that, while that is true, these are not actually those cargo ships. The ones you're seeing are actually like military stuff, U.S. military stuff, but they're not, there's no permanent military fixtures in the CNMI. There's a couple like small little things, but nothing super significant. What these are is basically like portable bases that aren't, are like quasi run by the U.S. Navy. Uh, just in case anything goes down, this is a shield of defense. Brought the Sega Pluto back, by the way. He enjoys his vacation. He was demanding his more, more time. So here he is lounging in the sun and enjoying himself. As you said, most well-traveled console in the entire world. So right out there, I hope you guys can see it out there. There's another island. That's Tinian. We may or may not be going there. Sounds like we may or may not be going there. We're going to go there. We're going to go there. Saipan Vegas! Yeah. yeah. All in, baby. <laughs> And then McDonald's. Oh, look, look, it's the only McDonald's, right? It's the only <laughs> McDonald's. I'm sorry, I was wrong. I didn't know. So we're back at uh, Bonsai Cliff. I showed you guys this last time. What's changed this time is we actually have tourists back now. There's actually people here. Plus we got a dog. What's up, dog? Um, and we also have these fancy cars. Maybe we'll explain that later. And I apologize for the lawnmower. Not much I can do about that. Bonsai Cliff, though, uh, if you guys saw the previous video, the big thing about it is that it was kind of where the Japanese held out uh, like the longest before the end of the war. Uh, and it's now just became like a, a park type of thing that's like a mutual respect thing for both cultures. A lot of Japanese people come here and pay respects. And up there is the suicide cliffs, which I've also shown. So we're not going to talk too much about that stuff because we've already done it. But I thought I'd show you guys one of the best views in the United States. This is truly one of the most spectacular views in any part of the U.S. I genuinely believe that. You guys are very lucky that you get to be able to see this anytime you want in real life. This, this almost does not look real. Like, the cameras don't do it justice. This is one of those things you really just have to come here and experience it for yourself. Yep, this is uh, not Photoshop. No, this is not Photoshop. I do not have that kind of film skills, guys. I could not edit this. This is what this really looks like. It's really very cool. We're gonna head out. We just wanted to give you guys a quick look at this. This is an absolute must. If you've never been to Saipan, you do come down here. You gotta check out Bonsai Cliff, right? You gotta do it, you gotta do it, you gotta do it. So this is the CNMI Veterans Cemetery, right? A lot of uh, American soldiers from the end of the Second World War buried here. I'm assuming there's probably other soldiers here too, Japanese maybe, I don't really know. Yeah. yeah, just last week, uh, one of my buddies was buried here. Really? Yeah. Well, I thought this was just World War II stuff. No, this is, you're saying this is still in use? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. it's still in use. Uh, this is right near Bonsai Cliffs, by the way. And of course, that one right there is the Suicide Cliff. And you can check that all out. But we'll just do a quick little drive around. I had never been to this spot before. I think this might have been gated off last time I was here. Like, it was locked oh, up yeah. and you couldn't actually go in here. It's a small reminder of everybody who served in there. If you've ever have served, thinking about serving, and you do serve, thank you for your service. It's, you know, we, us, we get to enjoy a nice, comfortable, peaceful life because people out there have served in the past to give us those rights. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So we are now also at Suicide Cliff, which I've, again, talked about last time, so we'll just give you a little highlights here. Uh, Suicide Cliff was a place near the end of the Second World War, the Japanese, well, as the name implies, uh, suicide. But um, yeah, it's now it's a park. They have this little monument thing over here, which I don't think I showed you guys last time. I don't really know what the purpose of this monument is, other than just a monument. But it does have a very nice view. This is new. I don't remember this being a thing where you could just sit here. But it has this great view off the edge, which I don't know if the camera will pick it up. There's a little rainbow coming in. So right down there is the cemetery, the military, which we actually had never been to before. So that's that from that angle. And then the bonsai cliffs are right over there. That's where we just were before that. So very nice view. And I believe this is the northernmost part of the island, right? Yeah, this is pretty much where it is. So, yeah, if you're ever out in Saipan, absolute must to come out to Bonsai Cliffs over there as well as this, and you can also check out the park over there. But, yeah, beautiful views. So the thing in the middle, right? Yep. Yeah, and what's it called? Mount Tapocho. Mount Tapocho. Yep, highest right. point, highest peak on island. All right, we're going over there. 
So another big observation that we've pointed out before in the past, this is Bird Island, which is another spectacular view, highly recommended. But beyond this is also that like, we at this point over here, the concrete just kind of ends and it's just kind of a dirt trail. I think we're gonna get adventurous. Are we going over to the dirt trail towards the we caves? Are. We are. We yes, this is gonna be a new thing. We haven't actually done this before, but we had to acknowledge Bird Island because you know, it's, it's Bird Island. Look at that, just look at that. So we've now entered one of the most remote areas of Saipan. And Mike here had this really good idea called not gassing up the car <laughs> before doing this. So, uh, you, you, how are you feeling? What do you think? Uh, I feel, um, according to Mike, we're good, so... We're good. You know, they just discovered f uh, fusion energy. And I really? Does your car run off of it? Does Saipan have a fusion charging station up in the most remote part? Yeah. Part of me thinks that probably isn't true. Yeah. Let's find out. Right. Unfortunately, Elon, we might have to. Elon Musk eat my heart out. <laughs> There's a big cave back there. Unfortunately, it's closed today. Maybe we'll be able to come back. Depends on time permitting. But this is... What's the name of this cave? What's there? Carabera. Carabera. I'm sorry about my pronunciation, but you can check that out. It's really neat. I have been in there before. I just never had a chance to show you guys. But it's a thing. On this road, you can see there's a whole bunch of rocks and stuff. This actually didn't used to exist only like a few years ago. I remember my buddy Matt and I drove on this and we just, it was much thinner and it was all mud. I can't even believe we got out of that situation. But like here, the rocks, substantially better guys. Like, huge improvement. We're gonna die! <laughs> all of a sudden, just concrete comes back. I remember this, when my buddy Matt and I were driving, I was like, oh, look! We're gonna live! Like, we, we, were, we like legit thought, like, as the phones weren't working, tracking wasn't working, we had no idea where we were, and then we saw what is clearly like a drug lord's house. We're like, hmm, we need to get out of here. <laughs> no, but in all reality, it's actually super nice out here. It's, it's, it's a much better drive now, guys. Like, congrats, that is a much more leisurely experience, especially in this car. Except for, except for our range is dangerous! What are you doing? So this is the old radar station. Also known as the um, uh, the female dog station, right? That's what this is. What's the deal with this place? Do you know? Yeah. What I've heard, it was used to track satellites in its days, but a lot of it was highly classified. Like, are we talking like World War Two? Like, what era is this? Ah, uh, no, it's eighties, nineties. This is eighties, nineties. Yes. I would have thought maybe like 60s, 70s, but maybe, 80s, 90s, but yeah, like... Yeah, but not... Yeah. I know it's not World War II, yeah, we didn't have yeah. satellites, but... Yeah. yeah. It's, it's still pretty cool. It's just this... It, I'm assuming this area is pretty abandoned, like... It's totally abandoned. Yeah. yeah. Although this looks more modern, whatever this is. Yeah, that's cell phone tower. Oh, cell phone tower. Okay, that makes sense. That explains why my phone's working over here. Yeah. Got a neat view and all sorts of stuff. And, uh... Some guy had a lot of fun, as you can see right there. Uh, <laughs> cargo containers... Yeah, it's, it's just kind of a, as he said, just an abandoned area, but like it's got neat views outward. And I, I like that. I just think it's really neat looking. Very cool. Oh, look! Star Trek, Starfleet logo, right on. Boom. Very nice. You automatically get a bonus point. For the record, this is the range we have left. But look where we are. Yeah, you want to walk through that? Because I don't. So what's the name of this area that we're in? So here is Asthma Twists. Ask my twist. <laughs> is that what it is? Ask my right. twist. My Ask twist. my twist. What are you saying? Ask my twist. Ask my twist. No, okay, no. Ask my twist. Ask my twist. Yeah. Ask my twist. Ask my twist. So we're currently at the mobile station, which I want to point out once again. This is one of the only parts of the U.S. where they have attendees standing by that have to pump your gas, like Oregon, New Jersey. Uh, Sienna is the other one. Can't pump it in yourself. And I, that's funny, actually, CNN had an article about this one day, where they were talking about how Oregon and New Jersey are the only two parts of America. I actually corrected, I tweeted at the guy who wrote the article, I was like, CNMI, actually, and uh, he just liked it. He could have responded, but he didn't. Could have corrected the article, but he didn't, he just liked it. So I got a bottle of Coca-Cola here, check this out. You can actually see that it's distributed from Guam but, even more interestingly, it's actually a product of China. This is actually built by, uh, this one was actually, these are bottled in China, I guess, and then distributed by Guam and then end up in the Marianas, which actually explains why they are carbonated water and sugar. These are not high fructose corn syrup ones. So technically, 
this is a Chinese Coca-Cola. Okay, I'm no expert on Mountain Dew, but this one's the full-length version instead of MTN, because it's international, uh, at least this particular one, because this one actually comes from Malaysia. I'm unfamiliar with a Blue Shock variant of Mountain Dew, but there it is. So this is interesting. When you look at the Pepsis, this one is uh, made in North America, so it's just high fructose corn syrup. This one is real sugar, but this one's actually specifically made in Guam. Look at that. So I've never seen this one before. This is called Pepsi Black, and apparently this comes from Hong Kong. Look at that, right there. That's cool. Kind of want to get this almost, but not really. Found some uh, random Oreo stuff that I've never seen before. I think these are both Korean originally, although I'm not 100% on that, but uh, uh, yeah, we got Oreo Skola Pies. This is like a strawberry one, and then we got these wa wafer rolls. Then Hershey's has got their own version of an Oreo bar, or Oreo uh, cookie, as well as their own chocolate chip cookies and chocolate berry cookies. I think I'm gonna grab the, the Oreo clones, if you will. Yeah, I got something for you, man. All right. Oh, f you. <laughs> That's disgusting. Get that out of here. What's wrong with you? No. No. Oh, wait, all right, we're, we're, we're walking away now. Just a reminder, Mariana's Coffee, that's local to homie over here. Yeah. You guys are one of the only parts of the entire U.S. that can grow their own coffee. A variation of Red Bull that comes from Thailand. That's pretty cool. Actually, looks like there's a couple different versions of Red Bull from there. Look at that, that's pretty neat. So I'm gonna go ahead and get a couple of coffees. These are kind of interesting actually, because they're made in Taiwan, but they're actually distributed specifically for the CNMI. It actually mentions Saipan right there. Uh, so, no idea if it's any good, but I'm sure it'll be fine. But uh, yeah, we got a mocha one, and then we've got a cafe one. That is a really nice house. I just want to point that out. I thought I was in America. You're telling me I can't take a dump here on the ground? Is that what you're telling me? Yes. Wow. This is, this is just, this is oppression. That's what that is. Seriously, why did you need a warning sign? Who's pooping on the ground? What are you doing? Who are these, who's coming here and pooping? So we are now at the top of Saipan. He's cheating. He's sitting on this thing. I'm on a natural formation. I am currently the highest person up in all of Saipan. Unless anybody is on like this tower or whatever. But that doesn't count though. Something. It doesn't count because I don't want it to count. <laughs> but from up here, you get a great view of everything. We walked all the way up here. This You drive up, there's like a parking lot down there. And then you follow these stairs and you can just kind of hang around and look at a whole bunch of stuff. But it's a little foggy out right now. A little misty. But uh, this is truly a great, spectacular view of the entire island. Like you get one tip of it from all the way down there, which the camera doesn't totally do justice to. But then you have the other side all there. Like this mountain is relatively centrally located that you can see like almost the entire place. Which is really very cool. When you get up here, there's also a bunch of uh, World War II memorial things that just kind of explain specifics about the fighting. History of Saipan, of Saipan and the war is that, uh, according to that anyway, after 25 days from the invasion, the United States government considered the island secure, but technically uh, there were incursions in the jungle for another 17 months of fighting. More information about that here. Actually, if it wasn't clear, um, the big thing that Saipan's known for uh, globally is that World War II, of course, had very significant battles here. Uh, the Japanese once owned these islands, uh, and then of course they lost the war, and the Americans uh, took control of them in 1945 and have had them ever since. Uh, and now they're U.S. territories, but uh, for a time they were Japanese. Prior to being Japanese, they were German. They had been invaded by the Japanese. The Germans just kind of gave it up. I think the Germans only had it for like 12, 13 years, something like that. And before that it was the Spanish, which had colonized it for, you know, <laughs> uh, uh, many, many years. This one just kind of talks about some of the American uh, invasion routes and how we uh, came onto the island in the first place, which would have happened, I guess, in 1944, according to this. We'll head out. What's the name of the, the, the city area? Garapan? That's Garapan, everybody. City area. Odds are if you're coming here, you're probably getting a hotel out there. It's just my guess. But nice area. That's where we're down. This this might this actually isn't like this particularly strenuous trek that it might appear to be. You drive up here for the vast majority of it, then you're basically just walking up a staircase, which honestly is pretty leveled out, so it's actually pretty easy. Alright, so we're in Garapan. Yes. At Micro say again? Micro Beach. Micro Beach, and uh, I've actually shown you guys this beach before, but it's a nice beach. It's near the American Memorial Park, which is over there, which we'll show you again in a bit. I actually wanted to extend this warning. Coconuts. Um, people think this is a joke, unless you're actually from an island or you've been to them a lot. People, coconuts are super dangerous. Like, I know it doesn't seem like, like maybe it's like a cartoon, like it falls, you get hit, owie, and you move on. People die from those things falling and hitting you. So 
it, it's no joke. If you see coconut trees, just stay away. Like you could actually, if that hits you, you will not live anymore. So stay away. So that's a general rule for all coconut trees. So we're gonna go over here, go around there and show you guys some water. Here's a big warning about preserving sea turtles because I guess they do come out here, so. Don't pollute, guys. No plastic straws, too. No polluting. I'm, I'm, I'm watching you, especially this one. Yeah, see, so look at this passive, nice beach. And you see a couple people in there, a couple people over there, but this is, seems to be as busy as it ever really gets. That's, I'm telling everybody, if you ever, you just want a nice beach, Marianas, you the CNMI, Guam, this is this is super nice. And this is, by the way, like the busy area. So we're now back at a familiar site, if you guys saw the first video. This is American Memorial Park, so we won't spend too much time here because I did a whole tour of the place, but basically this is just a, you know, a national park inside. There's a gift shop and there's a whole bunch of history of Saipan, including mostly the World War II. Uh, liberation effort. There's a big movie in there you can watch and stuff like that. And uh, of course, we got our flags. And I've pointed this out in the past. There's, it's really cool. It's a free museum. You can walk through and see all the World War II stuff. And then they have this big thing about like the American Quarter, which is based over there, for this territory, CNMI. So this is kind of cool. So in the last year, obviously, the whole country has kind of opened up a lot more. And now, this is more like what it was like the first time I was here, with people wandering around and just kind of living life. Like last year when I filmed that that first video on this place, it was really just a unique time because like we we're still in the pandemic, tourists mostly weren't allowed in unless they were from the mainland, which was very rare. It was really just like me. <laughs> so yeah, it's cool to see this place like alive and hopping. You gotta explain this to me. The first time I was ever here, this this place caught my attention because you have this rainbow array of like fancy cars. You got Optimus Prime and Bumblebee sort of. What is this? Why is this a thing? Uh, this was car rental uh -huh. and uh, back in like our heyday with the uh, Chinese tourists back in 2014 and up to 2018 uh, we just had a big influx of uh, Chinese tourists and um, and you know they want to get that piece of America so they come here and they get Mustangs they even have some Camaros like the one behind you oh wow okay. so this they're basically they're just coming out here and like renting crazy cars yeah yeah and you go all around the island with <laughs> barely knowing how to drive like I guess somehow if you come here without a Chinese driver's license they also let you drive on the on the road wow but yeah well there you go uh, if anybody wants to come out and you know cruise around in a Mustang multicolored Mustang throughout Saipan I guess what it's QQ car rental yeah. I guess that's what you got to do <laughs> it's easy to find it's like the American Memorial Park is like right over there it's like you'll you will notice this trust me so right there that's a place called Sura it's like a Korean restaurant. It says Korean restaurant. I had that last time, by the way, in case anybody remembers. That place is actually really good. Nice little buffet. A good little lunch spot if you want to check anything out. All right, what is this building? This thing is huge, and it's always got this crane on it. This unfinished is... casino. Yeah. Oh, this is the unfinished casino. Yeah. Okay, so I don't know. Obviously, I don't know the details about this. I do know that this, yeah, from what you guys said, like this was going to be this gigantic, massive casino. You could see this building from like every part of the island. And yeah, it's totally unfinished, and I guess funding fell apart, and yeah, maybe one day it'll get finished, but this thing just looks exorbitant and just almost gluttonous in its failure. Look at that, that's too bad. Hopefully they can turn that into something someday, because that is a significant waste of real estate, man. Look at this, and it continues on over here. How did you get this far and not finish it? That's insane. Let me guess, Chinese? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Chinese investment that just fell apart. A, um, a super typhoon plus a, a global pandemic might. Oh yes, too. those would be significant con yeah. contributing factors to something's demise. Well, yeah, hopefully somebody someday somebody comes in and finishes that up. This is the strip. Uh, we got the Night Scent Restaurant. Yeah. Yeah. Not surprisingly, you got a lot of Asian-centric restaurants, which makes sense because that's like, well, not only are you guys a lot closer to it. Ooh, Saipan Best, I like the name of that. And not only are you guys closer, of course, to Asia, but also I imagine it's because you cater to a lot of, you know, Asian tourists. So, it makes sense. Oh, and ABC stores. There's a nice shout out to uh, both Hawaii and Guam. And I guess you can rent cars here. Okay. You would think you would want to do that over by the airport. That place makes more sense. But okay. Yeah. Japanese King Pachi. But yeah, so this stuff, uh, this is all back in, uh, this is obviously in the Garapon area, so this is like the big city-ish area, near American Memorial Park. This is going to be your, like, I guess you would, comp to put it this in mainland terms, this would be kind of like the downtown area of the city. 
And so you would, you know, a lot of the nightlife and a lot of the restaurants, it's all going to be in kind of this particular area. Not so much the nature stuff. So if you guys saw the previous Saipan video, I made a reference to the fact that there's actually tanks, like Japanese World War II and American World War II tanks, like out here. That right there is the closest one we can actually get to. That is just the remains of a tank, just chilling out in the ocean. That is pretty cool. Conquered dead asses, man. What the hell is this? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> oh, this is Japanese, okay. So it's Lang... Okay, cooking... All right, it's like you can't put that in English and have it not really be English. I guess it's supposed to be French. Hey man, are you down for some bang bang? Yeah, I wanted to bang bang with him, but he turned me down. So uh, Mike, Mike just made an interesting observation. We can bang bang the asses in the moonlight with Marie. She's a biscuit. <laughs> <laughs> That's some sweet hot beaver. Ooh, yeah. We're talking about mustard. You guys are dirty. So this is kind of funny, um, I, at, during the holidays, my family needed this exact thing, and we scoured all over the Chicagoland area looking for this. Could not find it. It's in Saipan. I'm coming back with these, I'm gonna be a hero. I'm sorry I have to take this away from you guys. This is going back to the mainland, but you know, it, it's gonna happen. It's gotta come back. So uh, I'm fairly certain I know what they mean, but this is a very weird way to explain tampons to me. I, uh, I like how you guys named a shoe store after a disease. Good for you. You're fighting the machine on that one. Mike, where are we? What are we doing? We are at Thunder Chicken. So what's the deal with this place? Best fried chicken in the Marianas, guaranteed. Co Korean fried chicken. Yeah, yeah, Good, because yeah. we were randomly spouting what kind of things, and I was like, Korean fried chicken! He was like, oh, I got you! Yeah. And uh, here we are. So let's see how this goes. Is that a Saipan one, I think? No, that was Godzilla Part 2. Oh, okay. oh. There's a Saipan one when you did go to see it. Yeah, just keep going that way, you'll get to it about 10 months ago. So our, our food has arrived. What, what, you've got a lot going on here. you got some ramen. i got some ramen. Yeah, how's that going for you? You've been it, eating that for a little bit. It's warmed me up a bit. There's kind of cool weather out here. Waiting, waiting. Cool weather. Like a cool 28 degrees yes, Celsius. Yes, yeah, yes, really yes. cold. Anyway, so you got your chicken. Soy sauce chicken. Yeah, we all got the exact same thing. Yes, you already yeah, yeah, you got oh, yeah, time. This is... Out. This is more chicken than I was anticipating. It's definitely the right call on the, the yep, fried chicken yep. there. Yeah. So was you guys, good? yeah, it was great. No How, survivors. You be the judge. Well, let's, you be let's, the judge. Uh, you be the judge. Yeah. Look, my <laughs> plate's so clean, it was never even used. Oh, yeah, yeah skill. <laughs> Actually, no, that's mine. And that'll do it for part three. Uh, we got a big surprise for you. In the next episode, we're going down to a place that's very infamous. Tinian. Uh, this is another island in the CNMI that's best known as the place where the Enola Gay took off and the atomic bombs came from. Yep, we're going to go to the bomb pits. Uh, stay tuned to that whole adventure as well as some local food and all that sort of stuff that's down there. It'll be fun. In the meantime, please do me a favor, like this video, comment down below, subscribe if you haven't done that already, as well as check me out on all the social media stuff in the description, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Discord, Patreon, etc. Thank you so much for the support and I'll see you all later.